Now to our feature for today, the head of the International Monetary Fund has called for significant steps to address the increasingly unsustainable debt burdens of some countries urging creditors and debtors to start restructuring processes sooner than later. IMF Managing Director Kristalina Georgieva says that six-month extension of a freeze in official bilateral payment agreed by the group of 20 major economies just last week will help low-income countries hammered by the COVID-19 pandemic, adding that more urgent action is needed. She also says creditors should adopt contractual provisions to minimize economic disruptions, increase transparency and also endorse a common framework agreed in principle by the G20. Mrs. Georgieva also further warns that global debt levels will reach 100% of gross domestic product in 2021 and the negative impact of sovereign defaults could also quickly spread if urgent actions are not taken. Well, joining me now live in our Lego studio is economist Maiko Ilo to discuss the cautions and rising cost of living as well as poverty in Nigeria. Good to have you on The Breakfast Show today. Thank you for having me. Well, let's now start off with the cautions that we've had from the IMF and other international bodies. Take a look at budgetary allocation we've seen over the past few years to fund debt service inflation rate, which has also hit a whole time high. And now we're also looking at over 9.5 million people living in abject poverty in Nigeria. Despite all of the interventions of government, more needs to be done to support households and businesses and still have at the back of their mind a borrowing plan or a funding plan to support all of these? Well, uh, thank you for having me again. I think the, the issue is uh, a lot to do with planning, a lot to do with mismanagement, and uh, corruption is also at the, at the top of the pile of the reason why we are having issues. Uh, unemployment is uh, it's a major factor in where we have found ourselves. We have a population of uh, 200 million and counting, and uh, maybe 40, 50 percent are either unemployed or under, uh, under unemployed. So if government wants to tackle these problems, I think those are the, the ways to, to look at it. Uh, when this whole Chinese miracle started in 1978, it was on account of helping people find jobs and uh, helping them to be more productive until the average Nigerian is more productive than we are today, then I'm uh, sadly to say uh, the government will continue to take on debts and uh, none of us will be the better for it. And part of the issues that, call, uh, that raise concerns about debt is also the rising food inflation we've seen so far, the cost of doing business. At this point in time, reducing all of these costs is not, we just have to look for a way forward in terms of cutting the cost of production, cutting the cost of execution, cutting the cost of governance, cutting the cost of infrastructural projects, but still also have the value that everyone is looking for or clamoring for. Well, I, I think, uh, as has been said by the people protesting on the streets, the cost of governance in Nigeria is among the highest uh, compared with our, our GDP. The, I don't know if, uh, if we can do without a bicameral legislature, if we can do without the bloated uh, presidency, bloated federal government, even at the state levels. Bloated uh, pension plans and gratuities given to ex-senators and ex-governors in offices. That is the, way, the place to start until we get uh, a, a grip on where the, the monies are gone. You know, we, we continue to talk about the same thing over and over again. If the government is serious, let them look at the cost of governance. Bring it down, talk to the people, ask the youths, bring them on. Talk about the future of, of the people who are, who are uh, making up the bulk of this country and let us see if we can get some headway from there. And the cost of production? Well, the, the cost of production is linked to power, basically. If uh, we don't have a public power supply that is reliable and cheap, most people, will be, those who are producing things will stop production, maybe they will consider importing at the end of the day. If government focuses on power, there's been too much talk about it over the last uh, three, four, five decades. The mm -hmm. same issues, something must give. Why, why are we not able to supply our own power? Why can Ghana do it and Nigeria cannot do it? Why does South Africa produce more power that they can use and yet Nigeria is having issues producing 7,000, 6,000 megawatts for, for 200 million people? It's unsustainable. Mm. Whatever it is we need to do, let government begin to focus on it. We, we have a way of holding the, the citizens uh, accountable for things that 
they have no control over. It is the government that should hold itself accountable and do the needful so that people at least can have some benefits uh, from governance. Now, the government has so far backed its borrowing plan and given reasons for the current state of debt in the country. However, the concern of economic watchers remains transparency in loans taken, the plan to settle the debt, and a way to create further ease doing business while also attending to the inflationary pressures which drive the cost of households. What do you make of the call for transparency and accountability? Well, I think if it takes the credit on nations to be telling us to wash out how we are taking on debt, I think it's something we should heed on, we should heed. Nigerian economists and other financial watchers have also been saying the same thing. We are getting to a stage where our debts are unsustainable. If you are not careful, there is a debt trap waiting for us, and that's a position you get to where you find out that you cannot afford to pay your debts. When that comes, we don't want the experience of some countries in Africa where China had to come in and take over some of their assets. We hope we don't get to that, but government has to look. Nobody has ever borrowed this way or our way out of poverty. We have to invest we, in, internally. We have to go for productivity of the average citizen. Until we put the square pegs in square holes and round pegs in round holes, we might find out that we, we resort to debt to continue to uh, meet our needs. And at the end of the day, we are pushing ourselves much and much back into, into the abyss. And in terms of creating some level of structure in, in, our, uh, in the quest to have transparency and accountability, what should be the level of implementation and then uh, the autonomy of institutions in checkmating all of these? Well, it has been said that uh, Nigeria is one of the best countries to, to run on the basis of blueprints and white papers. I, there's hardly anything new anybody can say here about what needs to be done. When APC was coming to power in 18, uh, 19 or 2015, as it were, all you needed to do was to go into their manifesto. The, the plants were there. They've identified what was wrong with Nigeria. They told us what they are going to do. But now that they are here, are they really doing those things? So that uh, ties in with the reasons for the protest on the streets. People are asking government to do the needful. Do what you promised us you would do. Cut the cost of governance, uh, focus on unemployment, create jobs. Government is not expected to create jobs directly, but if you put policies in place that are pro-jobs, pro-productivity, definitely everybody will tie in and uh, the country will be the better for it. Mm. And government too, on its own part, says that, well, it's improving of its policy direction and also has the, uh, the intention of the masses at the end of the day in delivering all of the dividends of democracy. But we still have to see a stronger implementation in terms of our projects being executed and also the needs of individual Nigerians being met, especially the masses who cannot fend for themselves. Well, when, when the changes come, mm. uh, all of us will see it. Exactly. You Thank know. you very much for your time on The Breakfast Show today. Michael Elo. Yeah, well.